call the September 26th council meeting to order. Chief Huntley, would you give the invocation, please? Yes, Your Honor. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's gathered here. Uh, Lord, we just ask if anyone's struggling tonight with illness, um, any of their loved ones are struggling tonight with illness, that you just watch over them and comfort them, Lord. We ask that you watch over those that take care of us every single day and every single night. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Chief Hawkins. I believe it's in the pledge. But yes, Your Honor. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. So, a couple of quick announcements. Um, first, uh, council members, please remember to speak into your microphones. Uh, this is our first trial run of live streaming the council meeting online. So, uh, it's important that everybody speak into the mic so we can be heard. Uh, hopefully, this goes well and, and it'll be a, a regular thing at this point. Um, all right. Second issue, you haven't noticed it's a little warm in here and the AC is out and it's not, <laughs> not going to be repaired in time for the meeting tonight. Um, so please bear with us. Uh, we're trying to make it as, as cool as we can possibly make it, which is not very cool. Um, all right. Um, Now, as far as uh, the public speaking section, the, the public comment section, um, all I ask is that, that you please um, be mindful of, of the folks that are in the audience, uh, the folks that are up here. Um, everybody should get to say, you know, speak your piece and say what you want to say. At the same time, let's let's not be breaking decorum. Uh, please, please keep your comments to yourself uh, in the audience, and, and uh, uh, just just think about it, everyone else as well as yourselves. Um, so, one thing, I, you know, we we've got a council bill coming up later on in the evening uh, that addresses that. And I've, I've gone back and forth on this. I, I honestly don't believe that council bill is necessary. Uh, we've got, we've got play, things in place, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to back my support off of that council bill. However, um, if there are folks that want to make amendments or try to make it more palatable to Others, I would welcome those. This is just the first a first reading of this, and if there are no amendments made, we may remove the bill completely. Who knows? But um, in actuality, there's already sufficient controls in place with the ordinance that we have to maintain decorum and. That's, that will, that, that is what we intend to do. So um, again, I, I want to make sure that anyone that wants to speak has time and opportunity to do so. I think the live streaming is going to make it even better for people who can't be at the meeting, can at least follow along and see what's going on in the meeting. Um, but the, the goal is to everyone to be able to see what see what's happening and, and be aware of what's going on there's nothing trying to be <laughs> hidden um, all right we'll go ahead with calling of the roll Enzer present Taylor present Blankenship present Armstrong here Blair present Heckmaster present Hardesty here snow here Elif here Causey here 
Mr. Snow. Your Honor, I'd like, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion that we postpone tonight's meeting until October 2nd, 6.30 at Memorial Hall to allow more room for more citizens to come and participate in government. Second. I have a motion and a second to postpone this evening's meeting until when? October the 2nd? October 2nd, which is Monday. October the 2nd, and to move the venue to Memorial Hall? Yes, sir. All in. But Question, Your Honor. Are we yeah. able to live stream by moving to Memorial Hall at that time? No. No, we would not have that capability at Memorial Hall. Um, all right. Mr. Mayor, since we have the supervisor of Memorial Hall right here, we might want to make sure it's available. I just need to tell you, I don't have my book with me. I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. Okay. That, that motion would be pending availability. Yes. If not, we'd have to find a different, a different date. But I, now hang on just a second. Mm -hmm. Nate, is, is this a no no discussion motion it's basically a, a motion to adjourn until or right. adjourn to appoint those are not debatable okay all right so we, Robert's we, we there, there's there's no discussion available on this motion so okay. all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed no aye. no all right <laughs> no raise, raise your hand i just all right motion fails all right, no's. Three, four, five, six. You have to vote. Okay. You have. Oh, you have to. Bernie hasn't voted yet. I mean, I didn't say anything. I honestly, I don't understand why, like, the reasoning behind this, so yep. I'm not comfortable voting either way yet. Okay. Well, <clears throat> point of order, we can't have discussion. We can't it's, yeah, it's a non-discussion issue. Uh, non-discussion motion, like an adjournment. It's a non-discussion. So she can abstain. And then I abstain. Okay. That will work. I'd like to make a motion. I move that we move it to Memorial Hall next Tuesday night. You mean the next scheduled council meeting? The next meeting? council that we adjourn this meeting. For one thing, it's uncomfortable. It's hotter than heck in here. Um, and I'm very cold natured. Mm -hmm. And hopefully more people would be able to participate next Tuesday. So, Second. So you're suggesting a week from tonight, Correct. Tuesday night. Correct. October 3rd. Mm -hmm. All right. Second. There is a motion and a second. Point of order, Your Honor. There is a specific uh, place on the agenda for council members to give comment. Um, I think any discussion uh, or motions would be appropriate for that section once we arrive there, especially if we're talking about future meetings. How so does that I would I would motion to return us back to the agenda stated so that we can move on with business. Well, point of order, I believe that the mayor can actually recognize anybody at any time, Mr. Armstrong. It's it's appropriate. It's a, it, well, I, it's a consent agenda, and so somebody's objecting to it, that's, that's fine. Yeah, my concern is it, there, the motion is basically to adjourn this meeting. So if we wait until later in the meeting to adjourn it, I think that might be an issue. Well, this was just to reschedule the next meeting. No, it was, no, this no, it was, it was to adjourn this meeting. Are you meeting. wanting to reschedule this meeting? Yes, or the yes. Next that, meeting? Was, that was the motion, was this to meeting? adjourn okay. this meeting and schedule it for next week. So is the, are we going to just do this until we run out of days no or motions i guess so the motion is to move it to this meeting to october, october 3rd, 3rd at what time at at the, at the normal time yes at memorial hall and i have a motion in a second so all in favor raise your hands those opposed Got four and two Are abstentions. I am abstaining because I understand there's no discussion, but I don't understand the reason. It's okay. because we're in violation of the Sunshine Law. 
Well, no, it's not, but that's uh, Yeah, we are. No, Sorry. it's not. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we are. Enough, please. Uh, so, Nate, I want a ruling on this. The, the motion, actually, there were more yes votes, but we've got two abstentions, so. Well, I thought it was 442. Four, it was 442, four, four, so. 442, four, okay. So it's up to you. It's a tie vote. Okay. So we, I, in my opinion, we continue on. Okay. So motion checks. Okay. We'll move on to reading and consideration of minutes of the previous meeting. Mr. L. Your Honor, I move that we approve the minutes for the September 14th, 2023 council meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as written. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. A couple of proclamations. Uh, anyone hear from them? Okay. No, that's not been that done at the park. Okay. okay, so we've got a proclamation for the, the Nazarene Church. Uh, do you Chief, do you, yes. you want to say, say something? Pardon? Uh, if I could get the uh, members of the Nazarene to come up here, join me up front, please. Uh, I just want to say just a little bit before the mayor uh, actually does his thing. Um, as most everyone here probably knows, uh, I think I've worked more Marion days than probably anyone in the history of the Carthage Police Department. I have experienced uh, command centers that was a trailer about this big, and I'm not really joking when I say that at all. It was not much bigger than that. The big green bus, I'm sure that most everyone else saw, um, although it was much bigger, it was in very poor condition. Um, sometimes we didn't have one at all. Uh, we just had a tent. And so the, the kindness and, uh, that was extended to the police department and the city of Carthage by the Nazarene Church, uh, for me and my department, you guys went above and beyond. Not only did they give us access to the entire church, they brought us snacks. And Kyle loves snacks, let me tell you. And so I'm telling you, every day there was someone there bringing us stuff, we tried to clean up after ourselves, but they did that as well. I can't thank you enough. I really thank you.
it's not standing room only to watch us get a proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we've all seen some of the snippets on social media. And I've just been praying for our community, and I know you've already had a word of prayer, but I'm going to pray again. I'm a person of peace who uh, wants peace in our community. I want um, us to love our community in a great way. And, um, you know, in a, a few weeks, we're going to be standing in the streets of Carthage with, like, thousands of people. And, and when you look around, it just makes you proud to be a part of Carthage, Missouri. We've been here 18 years, and, uh, and I just am thankful that we get to be a part of a wonderful community. So when you look around, man, we've got friends in this place, don't we? And I'm thankful for that. And so I've been praying, and, you know, there's already just, I, I just pray for the peace of Christ to come into our lives and, um, and for us just to, to, to look up. So, I, I, Lord, I just pause for a moment. Thank you for friends in this room. And, Lord, we, we're like passionate. We want the best for Carthage, and that's why it's a full room tonight. So, Lord, thank you for that passion that you put into our hearts. So, Lord, as I think about so many great leaders and friends, Lord, you have blessed us. And we just, we just, we just kind of pause right there. Thank you for your blessings. And look, Lord, we look around and we say thank you for that gift. And Lord, as, as you just impressed upon us, Lord, we want to have an ear to hear and um, a voice to speak. We understand all of that. But Lord, I thank you that we have a great community to live in. I pray for your hand of blessing, for uh, prosperity, for strength, for witness, for peace. So Lord, we love you so much. And we thank you for your great love for us. We pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. And so, uh, God bless you. Thank you so much. All right, we have an additional proclamation for the to, to honor the Hispanic Her His Hispanic Heritage Month, and I will be reading that for them at the event Saturday at the park. So, um, all right. We will move on to public comments. Um, anyone wishing to address the council, step to the podium, state your name and address, and keep it to five minutes or less, please. Hello, everybody. Council persons, mayor, thank you for having me. My name is Jennifer Shotwell. I am the executive director for the Area Agency on Aging. We cover Barton, Jasper, Newton, McDonald counties. Uh, we operate at the Senior Center. Um, it's been a year since I've been here, and I would like to share some successes uh, that we've had at that um, location. Uh, we were created under the Older Americans Act, and for 50 years, the federal government, the state government, the county government, and Carthage City government has had the opportunity to laden this program with bureaucracy. bureaucracy. Let me tell you that this is one of those few times in history where this program works and people have not tried to laden it with too many rules and regulations. So this is a beautiful cooperation. Governments, nonprofits, fellow citizens, helping fellow citizens. Um, we can't do this alone. It takes a community, and our older adults are part of the community. 10,000 people a day in this country are turning 65, and they're going to continue to do so at that rate, 10,000 a day for 19 straight years. Let's face it. Our, eight, our nation is aging, and so are other nations around the world. We have to rise to meet these challenges. And that's why I'm here this evening, because I want to tell you this, uh, what we have done, thanks to the city who lets us occupy the building uh, that we call a senior center. We operate it, you provide the space, but it's the older adults that make it so. It's a gathering place. As we age, uh, social isolation and loneliness leads to early cognitive decline. With that in mind, let me tell you that over 810 people came and ate lunch and broke bread together at the Senior Center. They shared 9,444 meals at the Senior Center last year. Additionally, our most vulnerable older adults, those that are homebound, received 25,275 meals from that Senior Center delivered to their homes. Thank you so very much to our staff and our volunteers. Our volunteers we couldn't do without. We've been seeing um, a very important change in our seniors' lives. You've seen it in your own households. The cost of living is going up. Income is not for this 
generation. They're stuck. Uh, a lot of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we've seen a lot of bare shelves, so we continue to send extra groceries in addition to that home-delivered meal. In fact, last fiscal year, we sent 12,200 pounds of groceries directly into the homes of senior citizens. That's over six tons of goods. These are laundry soaps, paper products, extra food, um, uh, canned goods, shelf-stable milks, shelf-stable orange juice, just so they can get by. No one should have to choose over washing their clothes or filling a prescription, but that were, is what we're seeing. So you know, statistically, what we see, 60% of the people that, that we serve here in Carthage are female. 67% live alone. 46% are over 75. And this is important because last year, it was 55% that were over 75. And across our four county region, we are seeing this, this reduction in, the, in age in the number of people we're serving. And that's wonderful. That means we have younger olders coming to see us. We're not stigmatized as, that's my parents' senior center. No, it's your senior center. Um, some more successes. Uh, the Area Agency on Aging partnered with uh, Adult Protective Services this past year for a special program to help the very, very vulnerable people that entered Adult Protective Services. We helped several people in Carthage city limits with um, rental assistance, um, pest control, bed bug control, deep cleaning. We helped with some hoarding issues and we, we purchased beds and bedding for folks to help them get back on their feet after leaving Adult Protective Services. We built wheelchair ramps in Carthage. We helped 12 different families with 300 hours of other services that you don't normally think of coming out of the senior center. But we put a, a trained person in their home to take care of their loved one that they're caring for 24 hours a day. It's called respite. 300 hours of respite we provided so that someone could take that nap. Someone could go to evening service uh, and not get burnt out caring uh, for their loved one as we see happen. We had 82 people call and access other services, such as tax preparation help, Medicare counseling, Medicaid applications. We referred them to other nonprofits in the community who we work arm in arm with. So in conclusion, I can keep going on with statistics. I love them. It shapes what we do and how we plan for what we do. Um, but tonight, I'm here really just to say thank you, because we can't do it alone because if we had to provide that building that we have the agreement to lease from the city, we would not be able to put 100% of our funding into the community, into helping the people that we do. So thank you, and I appreciate your support. Uh, we all welcome you over to the Senior Center. You guys come every anytime. Even those of you that are under 60, uh, you can still come and get lunch. It's $7 for you. Um, <laughs> and it's great food. So, um, I'd be happy to entertain any questions, but being mindful of the number of people that want to speak, um, you can always contact me. Uh, Greg has my contact information. But um, if anybody does have a quick question. I was just going to say thank you very much. Oh. It's, an, it's, an, it's an area that we all need to be more avid about to mm -hmm. hear those stories and visit with those elderly people that we're going to miss out on when they're gone. I, know. I mean, it's just, so you may be seeing me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's my job to make sure we're there for you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. about a certain council bill that's on the agenda for tonight. I'm speaking of Council Bill 2370. I wish to express my opinion on this surface subject, and I will summarize my minute and 27 second remarks by saying, yes, I agree. It is draconian. It is dictatorial. It is exclusionary, and it's absolutely unnecessary. I will summarize re remarks to the city council. It is, it, is, it is my hope and expectation that each member of the city council has read their packet and see this council bill for what it is and will vote no tonight and put an end to this once and for all. 
Thank you, sir. Well, I guess you're going to get your fill of the Booyers tonight. I'm Jackie Booyer. I live at 1184 South Main Street with that previous speaking gentleman. And <clears throat> thank you for letting me have this opportunity to talk to you. And I think the council and the administration has bigger and more important issues than Council Bill 2730. Sometimes, though, meeting in public like this and having an opportunity to speak to the council is the thing that works the best. Sometimes you call a council person or you send them an email. And I will tell you from having been on the council for 13 years, they're not always complaints. Sometimes it's to ask for more information on something that's going on in the city. So it, it can be a good thing. It can sometimes be so not, not so good. Sometimes they really insist that you vote the way they want you to. But there are different opinions within the council. There are different opinions within the city. But I think getting rid of CB's 2730 is probably a very good move and lets the council and the city move on to other issues. And I would like to speak also of one of the items that was listed in that council bill, no clapping. Sometimes there are occasions when clapping and cheering are appropriate and sometimes they are necessary. So I'm glad we had the occasion to celebrate two uh, groups of people tonight. The council has shown some division and, and differences among its members as well as is uh, happening within the community. Um, but the council members are responsible for the actions that leadership has taken, both the mayor and the administrator. There are results of incompetence that have been exposed to the citizens, but some issues have not yet been brought into the public eye. Some of the things that we are experiencing come across as spiteful, as well as unnecessary, and there are some issues that have not yet been brought before the public, and I'm sure that in future meetings they will come forward. And have you un created a way to undo some of the things that we consider a mistake? the railroad and the bridges. That is going to be an expensive proposition if it's not resolved. Uh, the industrial development management comes to mind. You know there are some issues between the council and the administration and the industrial committee. I hope those can be worked out in an equitable manner that that issue can go forward and help our city by developing businesses and opportunities. And there are simple things. CWNEP board, it's an excellent board. They promise and provide necessary services to the citizens. And they also manage to give money to the city. And your appointees that will be listed tonight may be ready to serve and may be experienced that and have experiences that will help them to become a knowledgeable board member. But why was the change necessary? Why? That's a question that has not been answered and it comes across in the community as a play for power. And other things that happen in the city because of management and the council. I was on the council when the airport was done away with and Myers Park was developed as a great new center for development in this community and it's taking 25 years to have it happen. But when it did happen, the city spent a lot of money. They planned the streets, they did put in all the utilities, water, sewer, gas, whatever was needed for somebody to move in and be able to build something right there. And we sell it for reduced prices. The city does have the right to recoup some of that money that can be used for other issues that are before the city. 
thank you for the opportunity to talk. I'll try not to come back too often. Jack Cruza, 701 East Highland. And uh, my comments from the last council meeting uh, apparently need some clarification. And I think the notes in your uh, council packet from Mr. Dagnan probably didn't do the job. Apparently my comments raised some concern for the security of the Steadley Grant and thus the viability of the industrial park project. Mr. Dagnan notes that he contacted Tony Twyman, the representative of the trustee Bank of America. I have absolutely no problem with that. And a prudent approach would have had him say, hey, Cruz made some comments at the last council meeting and he raised some questions and asked about the status of the grant and if the commitment was still firm. Instead, in true command and control fashion, he chose to attack me. He did not share this with you, but his email to Mr. Twyman said, and I quote, does Mr. Cruza have the authority to make such comments on behalf of Steadley? And are you as trustee comfortable with an advisory committee making such bold comments? I interpret that to say, hey, you need to get a muzzle on Mr. Cruza and probably should get rid of him on your board. Well, here I am and I'm not muzzled. Council members, I hope you can see that that type of leadership style is not right for this city. If you read the text of my comments from last meeting, you note that the very first thing I said was that I was speaking on behalf of the advisory board. At no time did I say I was speaking for Bank of America, nor did I suggest that I had the authority to do so. And as far as speaking so boldly, I was not just speaking for myself. I was speaking with the unanimous support of all seven of the members of the advisory board. They all reviewed my notes before the meeting and they all approved them. So the boldness covered the breadth of the entire board. Now back to the grant status. Mr. Twyman did confirm that the commitment is still there, but he does want to see the formal management agreement signed as recommended by the advisory board. When that happens, the first installment will be paid. Again, if you reread my comments from last meeting, I think that's pretty much what I said. Admittedly, I came at it from the negative side saying that no agreement, no funding. But Mr. Twyman and I both said the same thing. One last point. Mr. Dagman's note in your packet says that Mr. Twyman noted that the board has not made any statements about not funding any future city requests if they have Mr. Dagman's name on it. I confirm that we have not. Any future grant requests by the city will stand on their own merits based on need, community priority, fit with the trust mission, and of course, confidence that the funds will be well managed. It also says that Mr. Twyman said that no comments about the lack of trust in city leadership have been conveyed to him by the advisory board. Let me comment on that right here. While it hasn't been a topic of recent board discussions with Tony, Every one of the seven of us has voiced individual concerns among ourselves about city leadership being off course. And there surely is a problem with trust. Mr. Mayor, council members, I'm Bill Putnam. I live at 624 Bel Air. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Mr. Dagnan for providing me some of the missing minutes that we talked about at the last meeting. Unfortunately, uh, those may have opened up more questions than they answered, and I still have not received the minutes of the action referred to in Mayor Rife's posted letter of July 13th, 2023, when he indicated, uh, when he talked about the hiring of Mr. Dagnan. But my brief reason for being here tonight is to follow up my comments from last meeting 
After I recited the numerous violations of code and charter in the hiring of Mr. Dagnan, which I repeat were not the fault of the council, I thought it would be remiss of me not to suggest a solution to the problem, which would help restore some of the credibility which the city administration has lost over this poorly handled debacle. Next, let me say that I have received an outpouring of support for my comments last meeting. I have received numerous messages from folks thanking me for speaking up and pointing out these violations. Several times in public venues in the past two weeks, folks I have never seen before have approached me asking if I am Mr. Putnam and expressing appreciation for my comments and for taking the time to do the research. Not a single person has been critical of them. Now, as to the solution, it's really quite simple. First, as the proper procedures were not followed in the hiring of the city administrator, the council should declare the position of city administrator vacant. This should not be a problem as your legal expert, Dr. Nicholas, basically said you can do anything you want other than violate the charter. This could be started tonight as your rules of order in section F allow a majority vote of the council to take up business outside of the regular order. Absent that, another option is to terminate him as outlined in code section 2-160, and then start the process over following the rules stipulated in the charter and city code. Mr. Dagdon would certainly be eligible to reapply, which would provide an opportunity for Carthage citizens to discuss his qualifications and management style as well as the requirement in section, charter section 5.3 that the city administrator be a Carthage resident. Next, as required in code section 2-157, the mayor should appoint a committee consisting of himself and two council members approved by the council. This committee would do a search and bring a recommendation to the council. Note that city code states that the city administrator be appointed by a majority vote of the council with the approval of the mayor, not appointed by the mayor as was done on April 1, 2022. Another violation I did not know about until Mr. Dagnan sent me those closed session minutes. I believe this action would go a long way towards answering the questions raised by the illegal attempted hiring of Mr. Dagnan where much of the discussion was held in closed session in discussion of Missouri Sunshine Law. Of course, all future deliberations should be done in open session so that all interested citizens will have an opportunity to witness and participate in the process should they choose to do so. One last question for Mr. Dowden. Are you with me, Nate? I'm here. Does your job description include helping citizens with issues involving the city. In other words, if the council won't take action to correct these violations of charter and sunshine law, what recourse do we the citizens have? Well, if there's a violation of substantive law, you, you can sue the city under writ of mandamus, all sorts of things. That's, so the whole allegation or whatever you said that said they that we can violate whatever we want, that's not accurate. You can, you can violate procedural ordinances, such as the vote tonight to move the meeting. Um, that would be a procedural ordinance that says the meeting has to be here on the second Tuesday at 6.30. And that's a procedural ordinance. That ordinance. And so if they violate that, that's something that this council can do because they are acting as a whole. The same as the committee that you talked about that is all made of the same people that hire the city administrators. So the council of the whole can vote on that without going to committee. That's a procedural ordinance. But if there's a substantive law that's being violated, the, yeah, the people can sue the city. That's not. Well, I assume yeah. that most members here are conservative folks who would not dream of violating the Constitution of the United States. But the okay. charter is basically the Constitution of the city of Carthage. Okay. And it's been violated a couple of times. And there ought to be a way to address that and get it corrected. And how do you get it on the agenda to be discussed? And if you all aren't willing to do that, is our recourse to go to the Attorney General? I don't 
that's a question for me or not. Oh yeah, you can go to the attorney general anytime you want. I mean, that's okay. I don't know what violations of the charter you're speaking. So, of, Bill, so. you mentioned that that they could, the council could vote to vote against procedure this evening, um, and and that's okay. But that's exactly what happened during that hiring. It was procedurally unusual, but it was voted on by a unanimous vote by the council to hire Mr. Dagnan. So, but that was in violation of the charter. You can violate the ordinances, you can oversee them, but your man last week, Mr. Nicholas, said you can't do that with the charter. The charter requires a vote of the people. You, you, that's right. You, to, in order to change the, the charter. You do have to have a vote of the people, violate. but ordinances, <laughs> ordinances can be overridden by the council at any time. Ordinances, ordinances can be overridden by the council or can be voted on in, in spite by the council at any time, and that's exactly what happened. So there was nothing illegal about the hiring of Mr. Dagnan. the reports of standing committees budget ways and means chairman snow thank you your honor budget ways and means is currently between meetings we do have two council bills on second reading tonight council bill 2363 which is in the budget adjustment to do cleanup rollovers roll forwards uh, from the 23 budget and uh, we also have council bill 2364 which is a contract with total electronics on the uh, agenda tonight our next regularly scheduled meeting will be October 9th at 530. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Committee on Insurance Audit and Claims, Chairperson Blair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Committee on Insurance Audits and Claims met this evening in council chambers. Uh, we heard from Ms. Cox that the auditors are on site this week and they should, they're doing their annual audit and will complete it this week. She also said that she and Mr. Dagnan spoke um, to the people at Lockton, which was the choice of CWEP for do, doing the salary study. And they looked at the proposals of the different companies and organizations that they were considering. They agreed that Lockton was the best choice in part because they pay private companies for data which would otherwise not be available. And that data will be important data points for the salary study. And they would need access to get comparables for local areas, local utility companies. Um, and talking about that among the committee, Council Member Cossie suggested that we form a joint board, return to that plan that was initially in place with three council members and three people from CWEP. Um, and Mr. Dagnan said that he would get a proposal to the committee ready with that stipulation by our next council meeting, which will take place on October 10th at 5.30 p.m. in council chambers. All righty, thank you. Okay. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Ella. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Safety uh, met September the 18th, 5.30 here in Council Chambers. Several, uh, there's really only one action and then a resolution tonight uh, to come before the Council, but just to bring up the date, uh, Vicki Zeiler uh, came and made a presentation regarding uh, safe haven baby boxes. And basically, this is something that is fairly new in the area. There are quite a few of them in the Arkansas area. There's one in St. Louis. And this has been set up where um, mothers no longer want their kids and can safely drop them off. Um, they've approached to see if the, uh, the city would be interested in doing this. Uh, the fire station number two is the only one that really would be set up to, uh, to do this. So the committee uh, voted to go ahead and get additional information on this uh, including the contract that would be involved there's no cost to the city with the exception of just uh, maintaining it and operating it um, mr meredith the economic development director presented his powerpoint um, presentation to the city which i think was brought up earlier that the uh, city issues with economic development this is far from the truth uh, several products and uh, incentive packages that they are looking at and bringing the council up to date on it. So it was a good presentation to have from that. Uh, 
We also considered and discussed the UTV skid unit bid for the fire department, <coughs> excuse me, fire department. This is basically taking the uh, Polaris UTV we have and making it into a uh, brush truck. Uh, two bids were submitted. There was one bid that came in for 12622 from Feld Fire and a bid for $9,036.50 from Unruh Fire Company. Um, the committee voted to uh, go ahead and I this time would make a motion that we accept the lowest bid from Unruh in the amount of $9,036.50 for the CFD UTV skid unit. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the low best bid from Unruh, is that correct? That's correct, Unruh. For UTV modifications uh, in the amount of $9,036.50? That's correct. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Chief Huntley also uh, presented a rough draft of the firefighter in training. Uh, it's a program uh, that's being used now by three of the firefighters. Basically, it allows um, <clears throat> this training to be paid for by the city while they go through the academy. And if they, for some reason, do not stay long enough uh, over a certain period of time, then they would pay that back to the city. They've done this. The police department has something very similar to this. It allows to get the um, uh, type of people that uh, want and get them trained ourselves. It's a very good program. So the committee was uh, in favor of that. Uh, Chief Huntley will be coming back and having a more formal document presented that will come to council to be approved on that. Um, Chief Huntley also considered the um, uh, needing budget adjustment for the air packs, the SCBAs. They'd originally budgeted $26,000 from the fire sales tax for three of these. Uh, prices have increased since the budget was approved and they are requesting to add $1,441 from the fire sales tax to cover the cost of the uh, increase on that. The committee then did vote to approve that adjustment increase and forward to the budget committee and then the budget committee will be presenting it to the council for formal approval. Um, Chief Hawkins also talked about uh, the disposal, or not really disposal, is basically will be passing on or donating to, I believe it's four different agencies, uh, 12 tasers that are no longer going to be used because they've received new tasers. That is in resolution 2009 tonight. Um, our next meeting will be Monday, October the 16th. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Public Services Committee, Chairman Hardesty. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, public services met September 19th in Chambers. We had just a few items on the agenda. Uh, our first thing that we did, our first action, we adjusted the agenda. We had some uh, visitors, and instead of them making, uh, instead of making them sit there and listen to all of us talk for a while, we moved them to the front. And those visitors were Noah Smith and his wife Lizzie. And the issue that they brought to us, uh, as you've seen in your packet at our minutes. They were uh, interested in making a donation of four message boards uh, to be placed in the parks, Carter Park, Kellogg Lake, Griggs, and Central for uh, nonverbal children and uh, adults that happen to be in the area uh, to match the one that we've already got up at Municipal Park. And they're making that donation. That is, uh, the message boards are $300 each and they are being produced and installed by Noah and his father-in-law. And the companies that Noah and his father-in-law represent, which are actually making the donations, are NNL Equipment Sales and TNT Heating and Cooling. So they're doing all the work, they're, they're buying the signs, they're doing the installation. And you'll see that in Resolution 2010 later in the meeting. Uh, very, very nice donation, by the way. It's, uh, it goes a long ways towards uh, helping nonverbal uh, children be able to communicate. Our next item was a sponsorship policy, and it provides sponsorship opportunities for individuals and businesses to sponsor programs and services, uh, little league teams, things like that. Uh, you can be a sponsor with either a monetary contribution or an in-kind support if you needed to do 
uh, or provide some sort of services uh, that's in the actual contract. Um, and uh, at this point, I would like to make a motion to approve and accept that policy. Second. All right. Have a motion and a second to approve policy. The sponsorship policy. Sponsorship policy as presented. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion Your Honor, our next item of four was uh, the lighting bids for Memorial Hall. We had two bids that came in, one from Joplin Supply in the amount of $16,540.50. The uh, out, reach out uh, term, I can't remember the word, but anyway, their supply would be, would take uh, six weeks. We got another bid uh, from Covert Electric Supply in the amount of $16,190.48. So we saved a little bit there, and their, uh, their outreach was six to seven weeks, roughly the same. So at this point, I would like to make a motion to accept the lowest and best bid from Covert Electrical Supply of $16,190.48. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the low best bid from Covert Electric Supply in the amount of $16,190.48. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And our last agenda item, we considered and discussed uh, the purchase of some crushed, crushed lava rock. And that is for the Fair Acres baseball fields it's being provided by um, or being uh, talked about by Game Time Athletics. Their bid was $39,456. Now, what this does, it's crushed lava rock. When I first heard about it, it sounded like it was really ugly to fall down on, but apparently it's a specialized surfacing. It, the field will first be laser leveled, and then there's a special application to put this stuff down for the surface. And the benefit of it is that it isn't bad to fall down on and it absorbs water better than dirt. So when you have a rain out or you have a rain delay, the water will be gone in just a few hours instead of having to delay it for two or three days for the field to dry out. So you've got a lot uh, faster playing time allowed. Uh, the amount bid was for 192 tons of this stuff. It will come in approximately 24 trucks, 24 truckloads. And the reason we're accepting this bid, or I'm asking, uh, I'm about to ask and make a motion for this, $39,456. It's a sole service, sole source product. There's only one place to get it. So, uh, in my knowledge that uh, precludes buying it from them instead of having to put it out to bid because they're the only ones that can provide it. Um, so at this point, I'd like to make a motion to accept that bid of 39,456 and bring our ball fields up to a really, really nice surface. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the bid and Forgive me, the company name again? It's Game Time Athletics. Game Time. Okay. So, got a motion and a second to accept the bid of $39,456 from Game Time Athletics for 192 tons of crushed lava rock. Yeah, I'm gonna stay and watch that come in. That's <laughs> Any discussion? I do have one question, Ed. Did they tell you um, how long it would last, whether it was something we'd have to redo in a year or two years? I'm going to defer years. that question to the boss over there. It's an initial investment to get the crushed lava onto those four ball fields, and then we will have to replace it eventually, but not nearly quite so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Your Honor. We then proceeded through staff reports. Um, and our next meeting is a special meeting to uh, 
to look at some quick business that uh, is under a quick time factor. That'll be a special meeting at five o'clock on October 3rd in Chambers. And our next regular meeting will be at our uh, normal time, 5.30, at, uh, on October 17th. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Public Works Committee, Chairman Armstrong. Thank you, Your Honor. Public Works is currently between meetings. Our next regularly scheduled meeting will be the first Tuesday of October at 5.30 in Council Chambers. All right, thank you. We'll move on to reports from Special Committees and Board Liaisons. Ms. Heckmaster. Your Honor, I'd like to um, provide information regarding the Vision Carthage. So they met Wednesday, September the 20th at 7.30 a.m. at the cw &E p Board Room. A major action that was taken was that the Board approved Leanna Canfield as the new Executive Director. So if you see Leanna, congratulate her. Um, Leanna previously served as the Project Administrator for Vision Carthage and she brings valuable expertise and experience to her new role. Many projects are in the, the working for Vision Carthage. First up, get ready for Restoration Carthage this Saturday, September 30th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. This year's project will focus on nine homes located at Oak Street. Expect a range of services, including tree trimming, minor repairs, landscaping, and yard cleanup. It's a fantastic opportunity to come together as a community and make a positive impact. And if anyone in the audience or any <coughs> council members would like to volunteer, I'll bet they'd still take you. The next Division Carthage meeting will take place at 7.30 a.m. Wednesday, October 18th at the CWNEP boardroom, or community room, excuse me. All righty, thank you. Ms. Blair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Carthage Humane Society met on September 21st. They introduced a new board member, Arnold Hughes, a new kennel manager, Kara Marshall, and a new director, Katie Logan. Their Pickleball for Paws fundraiser will be October 14th and 15th at Griggs Park, and they plan to have a booth at Maple Leaf at 1 p.m. on the square where they will pass out treats, tips to keep your pet healthy, and information about the Humane Society. Their next meeting will be October 19th. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Moving on to Mayor's report. Uh, I do want to comment. Uh, attended the CEDC board meeting last week. Uh, that industrial agreement was presented to that board and approved and will be forwarded to a committee with the council and seen on an upcoming council agenda probably the next council meeting but i don't want to guarantee that uh, so that's in line um, i will say um you know it's been an interesting day an interesting week uh, we've had Several stand up and say how um, things have not been done correctly, and, and I disagree with that, but they have the right to say that. Um, one thing I have noticed is that everyone who's spoken, even folks that I've known my entire life, have gotten their information from a source and not one person has called and asked me what was going on. So it makes you wonder how interested folks are in finding the true information at times. But we'll move on to report or remarks of council members. Um, Your Honor, I'd just like to say I'm looking forward to hearing the discussion on the Council Bill 2369. I am honestly not sure which way to vote on this. Um, I'm very conflicted by it because I am concerned that it will be read as a no vote being in retaliation towards the remarks that were made by Mr. Lasley last year, but I am concerned that a yes vote will also be perceived as um, trying to 
implement things or force things. So I have not made up my mind on that. I just want that to be known to everybody and I will be relying on the discussion to make my choice at that time. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, anything? Yeah, I've got some comments. I, uh, I take exception to being told how to vote uh, by phone calls. And one person even texted me and left their name, which was, I thought was pretty good. But um, I was at the CWE board meeting last Thursday also. And um, stating that people on the city council were violating the charter um, coming from the people that they have come from. Um, it's it's uh, the pot calling the kettle black when you, meaning the CWNEP board, hire a outside attorney when that is totally against the city charter. And if you want to look it up, it's 2 319. And then we asked who was paying said lawyer, and what we got was 20 minutes of we don't know who's going to pay him yet. So I don't know what kind of lawyer y'all get, but any of them I ever dealt with. They had the money figured out right up front. And uh, if y'all don't like me, that's fine. I'm being as transparent as I can be. You want to know anything about me, you come and ask me. I'll tell you. I won't lie to you. I won't back up. I am a retired military vet. And as Mr. Bill said earlier, I believe that my oath to protect the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, is still in force. And if you have a problem with that, I guess you're going to have a problem with it. Because I'm not going anywhere. And if you think I'm going to vote to get rid of the city administrator because I get one or two bad phone calls when I turned around and got seven that congratulated me for what I was doing, you have another thing coming. So whatever you thought you knew about me, figure it again. I'm going to do what is best for the citizens in this town and what is best for the people in my ward. And I've heard from the people in my ward for the last two months about why we're letting this run on and run on and run on. Y'all want a line drawn in the sand? I draw it. There. Thank you, Your Honor. As a fifth generation over 100 years, my family's been in this town. I've received two calls in two days. One was addressing the ordinances on the time limits and things, which I heard, heard them out, and we agreed to disagree. Very polite conversation. Not in my ward, but I still listened wholeheartedly. Today I was at work and one left a message encouraging me to stand firm on our beliefs if there's things that we don't agree with or agree with. So uh, as with Brandy, I'm conflicted on whether the ordinance, Mr. Lasley was saying they're not going to condone that from his comments in the last council meeting or whether he was stating that that was a positive and they were in agreement with it so I will have to hear out what everybody has to say whether I vote yes or no and if I have to abstain and that's possible that may be my vote. That's all I have to say. Nothing this evening Your Honor. Ms. Blair. Thank you Mr. Mayor. I um, in hearing the debate on whether we are breaking sunshine law by having a meeting here where we have to turn people away I do think it's worth having a discussion about accessibility. I don't know how live streaming it changes that discussion, if people can access it from their homes. But I, I think accessibility matters, whether we have it here and have people participate as we want our citizens to participate, or if we move it 
if we can plan that with plenty of time to make accommodations for everyone that need to be there and want to be there, I would just like to have that conversation so that we can not be reactive or responding last minute, but have a plan moving forward to make <coughs> it so that we can all have participation at our meetings. I completely agree. Um, the, the deal with this evening was, you know, too short a notice. Memorial Hall was already booked for tomorrow, so the vendors were gonna be there this evening placing their, you know, displays up, so it was not available. Uh, it also took us about a week to get the PA system up and working the first time we did it. Um, so, you know, tonight was not, it was not possible, but future meeting, if, if possible, you know, that, that's fine. I, I'm, we can we can make that happen given the given the, an amount of time to get it done is there a third option that we have besides <laughs> chambers and memorial hall or is that it it's all i'm aware of i mean i don't know of any other buildings that are big enough to handle the, the capacity <laughs> and none, none that the city has access to or that oh, the city has management over and when will we know if the live streaming was a success in our attempts tonight do we have any uh, it's, so far it's so going now? right now okay. so uh, as far as i know yeah. it's <laughs> successful <laughs> yes sir as a third option i would throw out the community room at CWEP. Oh. well there you go and then one last thing i would say um, i also had some constituents reach out about CB3 20, CB2370 regarding the order of business and I just commend you for having the courage to say I've changed my mind and I understand that this is not what people want and I thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Honor. <clears throat> so Chris Taylor and my in Chris Taylor and my orientation session with Greg Dagnan, um, he stated that there are a lot of ordinances, and even the charter that we don't always follow. So he said, it's not how we do things. So why have we spent months trying to change the CWEP board members? Is it because we need to? I don't believe this is the case. I'm grateful that the mayor is appointing quality individuals, Sid Teal, and Tom Garrison to potentially become the new CWNEP board members. I'm saying potentially because of the uprising in our community from concerned citizens. This uprising, from my perspective, has become a tsunami. I could not believe the number of calls I received. The city and their mayor is now, is now viewed as untruthful. In the, with broken promises, in the CWNEP board meeting, Mayor Rice stated that he didn't know about the article featuring Nate Daly in the Carthage Chronicle. Nate stated in the council meeting that the mayor did know. Who do we know, who, who's telling the truth? So I will address that right now. When that was brought up, I didn't know what article they were talking about. I had not read it, I had not seen it, I had no idea what it was regarding. And Nate was right. I was aware of it. I, I saw the thing before it was written, but that was two or three weeks prior to that. So it was not in a time frame that I was still, that had that in the forefront of my mind. So if I had a little brain hiccup and didn't remember exactly what article was being talked about, so be it. So, the mayor has agreed to multiple solutions with CWNEP. Each time, he has reneged on the commitment. Major Rife, what's driving these changes? Why can't we stick to our word? I think we're following through with exactly what we've said we were going to do. The, there's, there's, you know, in order to not follow through, it takes two sides, and you're looking at one of them. Uh, the, the both sides have, have not held up their end. Uh, 
And I'm not saying that's good or that's bad. I'm saying that it is, is what it is. We, we want to get through this. That's what everyone's trying for. There's nothing in the world that we want more than to get back to a harmonious relationship with Carthage Water and Electric. That's exactly what we're look, shooting for. I think as far as the appointments this evening are concerned, everyone in that, on that board knew that was an option. And everyone on that board knew that, and, and even said that was the way it should be done was when an appointment is, come terms, the term is ends, that's when you reappoint someone or not reappoint someone. So that it should come to no surprise at, to anyone that we were appointing two new folks. New eyes doesn't hurt anything. It just improves the, the scope and the capacity of a board. So in the last, in the minutes in this packet, it stated that the recommendation was one board member would be replaced each year, correct? I think those are the new. That was one option, but at, at this point, nothing has been changed. So currently there are two board members that are, their terms have ended and that's who is being re reappointed, or that's who is being appointed, those, those two board positions. They're both coming due at this, at this time. Well, I would encourage you, Mayor, not to let behind the scenes appeals continue to tarnish your legacy to this community. People want no us to operate. I have no idea what you're talking about behind the scenes. It's all People. been up front and out in public. What we're doing now will long be remembered. We have a reputation, or we need to have a reputation for an honesty and integrity to rebuild. So I would propose, I would make a motion that we let the citizens see how we vote on this issue. Put a formal vote to show who's in favor of replacing the two CWNEP board members. I second. That's not a. She made it as a motion. It's not a motion that was on the agenda. On the agenda. It doesn't have to be on the agenda. Would that constitute a straw poll? I, th I think it is. Nate? Well, I'm not sure what the motion is. Just a motion to. So we're making a, a, a motion to vote on. To vote on what we're voting on, on later in the in the meeting. We can do it later. Okay. It would be new business. Yep. The, the making a formal opinion of the council, which normally is required by resolution, but I'll take a look. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. Mr. Hardest. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> what I would like to say is tonight I very much appreciate both everybody being here and both everybody being polite to each other and polite to us. Yes, there have been comments that are pointed and accusatory, but that's your right. That's everybody's right to be able to say that. However, when we say those comments on social media and to a degree, you're fairly anonymous. You're a name on a page. And you point fingers at everybody and you say derogatory comments and you call names and you make allegations about someone's character. That's just as hurtful to the people that you're talking about as it is to yourself. And I'd like to say that all this crap that's been going on is starting to affect people's home lives, it affects their health, and it's not right. We can work together, and that's what everyone should be trying to do. Don't look for the minute, don't look for the tiny little detail that you can ride into the ground to make sure that that person is right. Let's think of each other if there was a tornado that ripped through the middle of town, all this would go away and everybody would be helping everybody else. Why can't we do that? Why can't it be Christmas every day? And everybody says, wow, thank you. Thanks for the help. Let me help you. Let me hold the door. 
let me not bash you in public over something that's little. Everybody thinks it's great and it's big and it's huge, but let's think of the end game. Let's think of how it is affecting everybody's health and family. That's not right. My wife has already said that if I have my third heart attack, she's gonna sue somebody. <laughs> so let's not get to that point. And we do have an older generation here that is all being affected. We're all being affected, whether we're older generation or not. But blood pressure's being risen. You've got a danger of strokes. You've got dangers of heart attacks. You've got families that can't go to events because they're afraid of who they might run into. That's not right, and that's not Carthage. I've only been here 13 years, but I fell in love with this town because of the people. Show me, please, the people that I fell in love with, please. Let's work together and stop the picking at each other, please. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Mr. Snow. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to table the mayor's appointment of Carthage Water Electric Plant Board until such time that the ordinance or a, an ordinance is considered or not to realign the terms of appointment and the terms of uh, reappointment to the board. Second. I have a motion and a second to table the appointments. Do we have a, a, a specific date and time or? I don't. I, I know that it's been discussed that we align, realign the appointments to where one appointment annually at the right. same time and to appoint two new members now would <clears throat> have to be readjusted at that time anyway, so let's just wait to do the appointments at that time. <clears throat> All right. We've got a motion and a second. <clears throat> You saying just to postpone consideration of that matter until later? Until yes, sir. Until it's debatable. Time when the uh, ordinance has been amended. Uh, it is debatable. Okay, Mr. Armstrong. Um, I believe Ms. Heckmaster was the one who was discussing the ordinance that we talked about in the joint committee. Uh, the one that you're you're also talking about, mm -hmm. Mr. Snow. Well, I remain committed <coughs> to working together with members of the CWEP board to get those ordinances before this body for a vote. I don't think that delaying putting anybody on the CWEP board is going to solve any of those problems. The two gentlemen who are terming out will no longer serve on the board, so we will then be operating with a board down two members. Um, I think the best thing we can do is take a vote on the members that we have before us and get them started in learning the process if we approve them so that whenever we do fix this, we're still gonna be addressing the same problem and we're still gonna fix it, but then we will have taken away their opportunity to learn and to get adjusted to this board for, their, for the term that they're gonna be on anyway. So I, I'm not in favor of waiting. These two men don't need to, to sit in limbo while the council and, and the CWEP board figure out how we're gonna deal with appointments in the future. I'm fully committed to making sure that we continue that discussion, but I don't think waiting is gonna serve anyone. Thank you. Mr. Snow. Uh, I'd, I'd like to reply to that. I believe that with two empty seats, that may put a sense of urgency for that matter to be brought forward sooner rather than later. So I believe that vacancies may create a situation where we need to get that done sooner in a sense of urgency. Thank you, Ron. All right, any further? Uh, I, mean, I can speak to that. Sure. I mean, as for a sense of urgency, I, I spoke to Mr. Dagnett about that very issue last week. I spoke to Chuck about making sure that we keep these, this process moving forward. I've spoken to members of the CWEP board. It is forefront in my mind that we continue to have these discussions and that we make progress. And so as far as a level of urgency, I am feeling that and I am encouraging that and this vote will not change how I feel about that. So uh, denying these men the opportunity to, to get acclimated to that board I think serves no purpose. All right. Anything further? 
All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 In favor of tab tabling and yeah. tabling. Oh. Yep. This is a motion to table. All right. So that? raise your hands, all those who say aye. Those opposed, raise your hands. Motion fails. Nope. Uh, also, Your Honor, uh, at this time I'd like to make a motion to repeal Council Bill 2370. Second. I mean, it's kind of premature if it's, nobody it's, makes it's a up for first second reading. first reading it dies anyway, correct? Yeah. I would prefer for it to die before it gets to first reading. Okay. An objective being on the agenda, I think it's probably the better yeah, remove it from be, the agenda. Be I think a motion to remove it or amend the agenda and remove yes. Okay. Council Bill twenty three seventy. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Mr. Ellen. Your Honor, can we have uh, before we do this, can we have comparisons of what we have existing, what has been added? I mean all we have in our package is the correct the current one, is that correct? That's that's the one that's being presented is, is what we've got in the package. You had said earlier that we do have some that is already in effect on and it. basically I, well I under the rules of like uh, um, Rosenberg rules there's a decorum section that deals with the mayor controlling can control right. the meeting and, and outburst and how people are to handle themselves things like that so it's not a specific it's not, not, not a specific no. ordinance no but it, it it's discussed and and dealt with in that manner okay. actually I believe I looked up we do have an ordinance that pertains to this because I if I'm thinking of the right one right this is the decorum ordinance because I looked up to see what we had existing and we do have something existing and this adds quite a bit to it it lengthens it and 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 extends the prohibitions on different activities so there is something in okay. place in our ordinance yes that's now. correct but he was asking what what was the mayor was indicating he had that was in addition to what we had. So, I mean, the ordinance is there. It's section two dash thirty four. Let me pull it up. Um, it's got dear. Let's see, all the council. During public comment period, each person addressing the council shall state their name, address, or organization. It's, it's section 2 3 4, revision 2. Um, shall state their name, address, or organization or firm is limited to no more than five minutes. The time may be extended if the chair uh, deems necessary. Once a person has had their say on a particular issue, they are not permitted to once again speak on the issue. Call to answer any further questions. Um, on the, unless called to answer further questions by the council or the chair during the report's remarks, so that's the council members. I believe that's it. Yeah, uh, not I'm, much I'm to it. Scrolling down, let me see. I think that's it. Okay, Mr. Snow. So the reason I'm opposed to this, and I appreciate Mr. Taylor's comments about upholding the Constitution of the United States. Freedom of speech is one of the uh, B Bill of Rights that we have as Americans. And I believe that the citizens of Carthage should be not only encouraged to come talk to us, but they should also have the ability to participate by attending meetings. And I believe this council bill would limit those freedoms that we enjoy. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Your Honor, Your Honor I, don't, I don't believe this limits the freedom of speech on anything coming before the council. In fact, we were provided copies of the city of the Carthage R9 as well as the city of Joplin, and those are much more uh, restrictive than what we have proposed. So if we want to look at this and maybe make some modifications, I would be fine with that, but just taking it off completely, I, I don't like it. Thank you. If I might address that, Mr. Ella. I don't believe that we are the Carthage R9 or the city of Joplin and we have the right or we have the authority within the city of Carthage to conduct our meetings as the city of Carthage and I believe that this would limit people's First Amendment rights. 
I wasn't saying whether the R&I or City of Java. I'm just saying others have looked at theirs and made adjustments that they thought necessary. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do believe there are reasonable adjustments that can be made to the policy that we have and the policy that we have before us. I think if anything has um, transpired over the last few months, it's that we need a standard set of operating rules for expectations on how meetings are conducted. Um, I, don't, I don't think that that's out of line. Every, every teacher, and there are many teachers in this room, college and you know, primary and secondary, everyone has a, a set of classroom expectations that you have in your room for how class is to function, how, how, what level of respect, who gets to talk when, how discipline has happened. I think that having a standard operating rules that everybody understands the expectations for how we're to act in a meeting, and if we need to modify those, that's reasonable. But operating what we have now, I don't believe, has shown itself to be deficient. Um, and I think that if we look at this and we take a hard look at what is reasonable and what protects people's rights, but also sets an expectation for how meetings are to be conducted, I think that's just best practice. I disagree with Mr. Armstrong. I believe that we, as Mr. Daly just read, we have a set of decorum rules. And is it possible that some people cross the line? Yes. But is it also possible they're not aware of the decorum rules that they were supposed to follow? Also, yes. So I think that they need to be made aware, the public in general, and, and those rules in place need to be enforced. I agree with Mr. Snow. We are neither the Carthage R9, nor are we the city of Joplin, nor are we any other city. We are the city of Carthage and we get to set the rules that we operate by. And up until now, these have been perfectly sufficient. The, the appearance of this on the agenda appears to be extremely petulant, and that is what I've been hearing from all of our citizens, is the way I took it when I read it, and that's the feedback I'm getting from others. I think that if we just remind people what the decorum rules are and people agree to abide by them and we enforce them, I think that what we have is sufficient. Anything further? So the motion on the table is, is to, to amend the amend agenda, the agenda and remove Council Bill 2370. All in favor, raise your hand. All right, so motion passes. So now that I've made a couple motions. I would like to address the issue of decorum. And I believe that, it, that decorum is important regardless of whether it's council meeting, how we conduct our uh, meetings in our private groups, our organizations that we belong to. And I believe Ms. Cossey said, the public may not know what the decorum of our meetings are. Our meetings are to be quiet. Our, meetings are to be held with the council conducting the business without comments from the from the audience our comments from the citizens should be uh without uh should be factual and not be led by mistruths or hearsay or innuendos and i believe that the mayor has the ability to stop someone from speaking if they're using derogatory language or foul language and ask them to either be seated or to stop talking. I believe if, the, if, the, if that person refuses, then that person is setting themselves up to be removed from the meeting. So we all have to remember that. I tell you, it's been, this whole summer has been a very long summer for me. It's very difficult when you're sitting in a position like this and we, Sometimes we know what we're getting into when we sign up to be on this city council. We have to make decisions that are difficult. We have to make decisions that may not be favorable to everyone. As my dad told me growing up, you can't please everyone all the time. You try to please the most people you can most of the time. So I understand why people are upset. I understand why they're, you're coming to this meeting to talk about the issues that we have before us that we have not been able to come to conclusion yet but i ask that when you come to these meetings 
If you're addressing me or any of these people on this council, the mayor or any of the city staff, be respectful. These people are my friends. How would you like it if I came to your house and said things like that to your friends or your family? So please be respectful when you're coming up and speaking. Please be recognized by the mayor. Be recognized when your time is up and please participate by the decorum that we have that it should be understood. It's understood in all levels of government and it should be understood here also. So I thank you for participating. I am gonna protect your right to participate all I can, but also be courteous, be kind, and come with prepared facts if you're speaking and don't come with hearsay and innuendos that aren't factual. So that's all I ask. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, had an email from uh, one of the uh, members of the ward today on a couple of things. And I concluded the email, which ties in with what Mr. Snow, what several have said tonight. And it was this, we've gotten away from respecting the office because we may not like the person in the office. That's wrong. The public should respect the offices of the council as should the council respect the public. Unfortunately, the world has changed a lot since we were kids. I think that sums it up. Additionally, if I may, uh, going back on the uh, number of people, excuse me, officer, have we turned any away tonight from coming in to the building? I'm just curious. Yes. Okay. We have? Yes. Okay. Do you know about how many? 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Coffey. Yes, actually, I have a couple of things. Um, so the first thing, I'm just a little bit in, unclear on something that we addressed when Ms. Blair spoke. Um, she had me mentioned capacity, We're kind of coming back to what Mr. Olive said. So I, doesn't it require, it, I, what I'm hearing is that it requires a motion and a vote to, to move future meetings to the Memorial Hall. Is that what I'm hearing? Mm -hmm. And I, I, now correct me if I'm wrong. In this my, case it would, because the agenda was already set. With okay. The meeting here. But, but for future meetings, it would not. Is that right? Well, the mayor sets the agenda. So if like the last meeting, he put it at Memorial Hall, it's a consent agenda. So if nobody objects to it, then that's the council agreeing to that, essentially modifying the ordinance that says where the meeting's at. But it was already set, so then it would require a vote to, to uh, go, because the, there's an ordinance that says the meeting's here at 6.30. So it would require a vote in this case to, to do that. So then in, in every other instance, other than when the agenda has been sent out, then the mayor can choose the time and the place. Is that, or the place? Well, I mean, you would all have to agree to it in the long term. So I mean, if he set it on a Wednesday at noon, um, then there would be objection. If there's objections to that, it has to be the consent to it once it happens. I mean, that, you wouldn't want to do it and then have people say, no, we don't. Right, so, so let me be more specific, rather than the time, specifically the place. The, he has the ability to, to declare that the meeting is now going to be at Memorial Hall until we are no longer in violation of the Sunshine Law, is that right? Well, he has the ability, the ordinance says that it's at this place right here at 6.30 on the second and fourth Tuesdays. And so changing the location is really no different than changing the time, but when the agenda is set under ours because it's a set agenda, that it's a consent to unless somebody objects. So if no council member objects to it, then it's fine. But I mean, I don't think you can just say every time he can set it and because if somebody disagrees and we got a problem. Right, but sometimes it can happen because, well, the only thing I'm coming back to is we're being told that, that we need, ultimate, ultimately we have an ordinance and we need approval to move the time and the place, but this summer there was no council vote and we moved it to Memorial Hall. Correct. Right, and so the mayor can do that then. Yes. Or do we need, and if the council, if someone on the council wanted to make a motion that for the foreseeable future until the crowd numbers lessen that we have it at Memorial Hall and that we reserve the second and fourth Tuesdays, we, do we need to do that by vote? I then? think if you guys did it by vote, you could do that. That's a procedural ordinance, you could change that. So if somebody wanted to make that motion do that now, then we could change that for whatever time frame you want to look at. Okay. Um, and so uh, as one of my items, I would actually like to make that motion because as you can see, we've, we've had to turn away 10 to 15 people tonight at the last council meeting, which I apologize for not being here for. I had a conflict and there was something 
that that was more pressing so I do apologize for not being here last time but we had to turn away people at the last meeting we have been at standing room only since June so this was not a surprise to anybody that uh, that we are over capacity right and that we cannot fit the people that we are reasonably expecting to fit when I brought up to when I brought up earlier this week that we needed to move this meeting to the Memorial Hall everyone acted surprised <gasps> really we we can't fit everybody that we need to well anybody who can look out of the crowd I apologize anybody who can look out of the crowd can see we're at standing room only and the first call that should have been made Friday after that meeting was to find a place that could accommodate the crowd tonight especially once we knew what was going to be on the agenda there are two very important things that have concerned the citizens greatly one is the replacement of the CWEP board members as their terms expire with new people and the other is this ordinance that we just voted to remove from from the agenda so it's not a surprise it is not impracticable or impossible to move it because we should have known in advance and I shouldn't have to tell the mayor or anyone at the City Hall that that's something that needs to be done they should be able to tell by looking but at this point I would like to make a motion that we have all future meetings until the numbers are such that we can fit sufficiently inside this room again without turning anyone away I motion that we have all future meetings at Memorial Hall second I have a motion and a second to move future meetings of the City Council to Memorial Hall for the unknown length of time which I guess we would we would have to well, they can set, the, the they can set their own I insurance audit and claims them. meeting as well. I think they can just set their own agenda. They can set your own, yeah, okay. All right. Can we have a discussion? I'm confused on when we can discuss things and when we can't. Is it all? Okay. Yeah, so, I think so, yeah. It's, it's okay to do discussion. that now. So my, my question with that is I do think having it live streamed is a really important resource. So I think we just need to think through the pros and cons of that. If we say here, we can have a live stream, do we get more citizen understanding of what's going on in transparency that way? Or do we get more citizen understanding and transparency by having it at a larger location, but that doesn't have the live stream abilities? So I think that's worth debating. So yeah, there, there's, there's the downside to that. Um, honestly, we don't have the capacity to even record and, and stream later um, at that Is point. it as simple so, as using someone's phone to live stream? Well, Could that be a solution? I mean, that's that's an op that's possible, um, but we don't have, you know, the PA and it's set up to make a, a quality recording to, to where anybody would be able to understand. And the acoustics in that building are so pitiful that you can barely hear what council members are saying, let alone on a recording. So. Uh, yeah, that, that's going to be a, a definite downside to that that option. Uh, Mr. Elk. Your Honor, do we even know if every Tuesday night's available, or are we going to have to kick certain we do not know that. building uh, groups out? Yes, we do not know that. Yeah. So I'd like to make a point to address uh, Ms. Or Councilperson Blair's question. Um, so. You are right, there are some benefits to being able to live stream and being able to record. However, the Sunshine Law that I referred to earlier states that we need to be able to have a space to hold reasonably anticipated crowds. And so, as I mentioned, we have been at standing room only. This meeting and the last meeting, we have been over capacity. The, the issues that the people are here to see and to see us discuss are not being resolved and are not going away anytime soon. I, I hope they would, and I hope that would die down and then everyone would feel comfortable live streaming. But at this point, we are in violation of the Sunshine Law because we could anticipate this crowd tonight and we did nothing about it. And if we continue to do nothing about it, we are in violation of the Sunshine Law. And I have reported to the Attorney General and I anticipate that many others will as well. Mr. Mayor, can I? Yes, sir. So not advocating either way. Uh, and I hope Michael Keith's in the audience and he'll tell me if I'm wrong about our technology. It took weeks and weeks to get this set up. Uh, so the audio, audio quality was correct and it was good enough to publish. Um, it was a lot of work. Um, the, the cameras are were very difficult to get the right placement. Um, and so if we go to Memorial Hall, 
Now, I was not at the last meeting with Memorial Hall. I was off because of my wife's surgery. If I heard the sound quality was terrible, um, surely we could have somebody stand there with a video camera. Yes, you're right. It's not going to be probably a quality that we can publish. I'm not sure. Um, you definitely lose the ability to live stream. And so, you know, technology wise, uh, there's a lot of things that Memorial Hall just does not have the infrastructure for. You know, at least we had the infrastructure here and then it still took a long time. So I'm not advocating for it either way. I'm just telling you uh, that you can't expect the level of technology over there as you have here. Uh, but not advocating either way. I know you guys will do what is right. So, Mr. Armstrong. Uh, if I may, what is the capacity of the uh, Carthage Water and Electric Community Room? Do we know? Uh, I believe it's 150. 150. I think tonight, well, last week, I know we turned away what? Three? Three. three? We turned away three individuals last week or last meeting. Uh, tonight, we turned away. 10 to 15, that still puts us way under 100. Mm -hmm. um, I would make a motion to agend Ms. Cossie's motion from the Memorial Hall to the Carthage Water Electric Community Room. Second that. Okay. Now, be, I've got a motion and a second. Before I <laughs> call for the vote. <laughs> So this is on the amendment. Just amending it to the This community. is the amendment, yes. Okay. I'm in, uh, voting on the amendment. But I, I want to ask Mr. Bryant first off if that's that's an option. If our air conditioner doesn't work, <laughs> I'm not Well, <laughs> you know, right. it is what it is. We, we, can, we can fulfill whatever need this council need it has. We'll do our very best, and I have a feeling we can make it work with our, uh, with our audio, video, and with the help of uh, Michael uh, and our staff. I think we can come up with a solution that meets all of the needs. Okay. I hear you have Thank a good you. fiber connection. It's, it's I think you know somebody that can do that, don't you? All right. So I've got a motion and a second to amend the amendment or amend the motion moving from Memorial Hall to Carthage One Electric's community room. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. One, one negative. Uh, motion carries. So now the motion on the table is move meetings for the foreseeable future from this location to Water and Electric's community room for regularly scheduled council meetings. Any discussion? So I would, I would like to make the point, I want to make sure that all of the council people understand that the discussion about technology, I mean, actually it's been resolved because it sounds like um, the CWIP community room is equipped with technology so that issue is solved. However, if it was not, the issue is still moot because the Sunshine Law, which is a state law, requires us to meet at a place where we have enough capacity to seat everyone who is reasonably expected to come. You do not get a free pass because you say, oh, now we're live streaming, you can watch from home that limits citizen participation and it is in violation of the sunshine law well it, it does say unless the is it impossible or impractical to do so and right. i think that was the issue of moving it tonight tonight one day's notice exactly. and it was not we didn't have the space available that the council recommended to be moved to Sorry. well tonight's right. unless of course you had paid attention to the crowds that we'd had no, all summer that's long not our that, job that's your I, opinion i can't violate that Mr. <laughs> so I, I have two, two things in regard to this motion that we're making now. Um, number one, as far as Ms. Cossie's allegations that were in violation of the Sunshine Law, I find that interesting and I disagree, primarily because if you have been in council for quite a long time, the average expected number of people to attend a council meeting is around five. So historically, if, you, if you've been here for a long time, you understand like not very many people show up. Um, given limited experience, I understand like that might skew what you understand as the average number of people who attend council. So I think that's forgivable. Uh, second, I think this is a great opportunity for the council to reach out and friendship to the Carthage Water and Electric. They are willing to extend this body of hospitality. I think we need to take that. I think that this is a, a good show of faith that we are one organization and that we are one community and that we work together and that we are willing to set aside any differences so that we can conduct business of the city of Carthage. 
All right, thank you. So we've got a motion and a second. I, I would just like to address, I, while I appreciate Mr. Armstrong for giving my perceived ignorance, uh, we don't necessarily go on what's happened in the past. We, we go based on what's reasonably expected for the future. And I believe that the crowd here tonight gives us an insight to that. Well, as a history teacher, the past is prologue for the future. And perhaps after this is settled, that would be right. But for the immediate future, it is not. I have a question. Has there been more than 150 people trying to get in here? No. Case in point. All right, motion on the table. We've got a motion and a second to move all four seeable future council meetings to Water and Electric Board's community room. All in favor, raise your hand. <laughs> Opposed? In opposition. Okay. Motion passes. Um, also, one of the other things I would like to address, and, and so it's not necessarily pre so pressing now since we, the motion has been amended not to meet in Memorial Hall, but um, I find it a little bit concerning that the stage at Memorial Hall doesn't have handicap accessibility. Uh, is that something that we are able to correct? Does that need to go through a specific committee to address that? I think the ramp that was built over there is reusable, is that correct? Uh, so it, it is possible for that ramp to be set up for the, the meeting that we had the last time over there. So it, it does have access to the stage anyway. Um, and there are accessible restrooms in the, in the building. Um, so so that, that part of it is, is accessible or can be up, up on need. Okay, great. Because when I had asked about that, I, was, I wasn't told that it was reusable or that we had even retained it. What was yeah. told to me was that we had to build a ramp last time and it was implied that it would have to be done again. So I'm, I'm glad to know that we have that and that it's reusable. Um, my, so my third and final concern um, is that I've, I've been recording some of the comments as they've been made during the, the council participation or council comment part. Um, and so, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, you want to get back to a harmonious relationship, right? You, you want the city to. Um, and Mr. Hardesty said we can work together and that's what we should be doing. I absolutely agree. Um, you also said it's all been public and, or it's all been upfront and out in public. That part I disagree with because I, I have heard things from people at City Hall that are allegations that have been denied. And then I've heard allegations from people related to, to CWEP and the City Hall has denied those. And as we learned when we had the municipal attorney in, discussions about boards do, are, are not allowed to happen in closed session meeting. I feel at this point we, we continue to have allegations and they're, they're not addressed at the time. I feel like we need to get everybody in one room in front of the public so that we can so that everything can be laid out and so that discussions can be had in a public forum because it's my understanding that multiple times this summer that we have made we have gotten together this when I say we the city has gotten together with the CWEP board and has made agreements and then we continuously renege on them one, one of them case in point was a letter that you wrote and you dissolved the committee that you agreed to appoint the last one that I'm aware of was we sat down when I say we City Hall sat down with CWEP there was an agreement it didn't even make it to a press release before city before our city reneged on the agreement and my real concern is that multiple times people have been told that something can't happen because we don't have the votes in fact in your letter you said the council will not support it you cannot know if the council will support something unless a vote has been taken or unless the sunshine law has been violated and you have pulled more than six people and so i'm, I'm concerned sorry, i disagree with you there if you've been in this council or been a member of this council long enough to know, I, I can pretty much look around the room and tell you exactly how each individual in here is going to vote without me polling anyone. I, kn I know the council. I know generally how they vote and what's going on. So no, nobody's been polled. 
So then what you're saying is your statement was conjecture and what you should have said was, I believe that the, the council will not support it. You cannot say the council will or will not support something unless you have either pulled them or we have taken a vote All right, and that did not happen. And so is, there, it, is there a motion or any anything? Yes, there is a motion. I would like to motion that the CWEP board and the city council sit down in the same room in a public meeting and we have a public discussion about what has gone on. So any allegations or any, any movement forward can be hashed out in public so that we stop these rumors and everything that's happening in the dark. Second. I have a motion and a second. I have a motion and a second for a group meeting. Time and place. Carthage Joint Electric Board and City Council. Is there a time and a place? I mean, that's part so of the described, or is that to be announced? I mean, so if you would like me to amend the, or add to the to the motion, I would I would move that we do it at the next City Council meeting when we meet at at the CWEP headquarters. There's a motion and a sec to have a group meeting between the board and the council during or after, after I'm guessing our next council meeting. I'd Can't like it to be part of the next council meeting. I'd like it to be put on the agenda. As part of the next council meeting. Any discussion? Miss. Mr. Bryant. Sorry to interrupt. Yep. I, love, I love your thought. And, and during an issue that Springfield City Utilities and the City of Springfield had, I apologize. Oh, come on up. Yep. Uh, that over very similar things about 20 years ago, this was their resolution, and they did this a couple of times a year, or they still do. I think it's a great opportunity to for all, all of us to sit in the room and have a very frank discussion about what's going on. Um, I, I don't think the CWEP board, I don't know who's left here, and I don't want to speak for them, uh, but I think that would be welcome, uh, certainly. So I appreciate your effort. Uh, can, I, can I ask that we do this? Uh, I, don't, I, I need to pull those members uh, and, and confirm their availability. At a time to be announced. So, so, so making it on the 8th, I am out of town that day. So if you don't mind, uh, if we can make it a day, Mr. Mayor, that would allow for everyone to, to be in attendance. I know that's very difficult with sure. the body of people that sure. we're talking about. I think it makes sense that it is on a date that is either a board date or a city council date. There's more members here, a lot more uh, to, to consider. So I think it makes sense that it would be a council date. Uh, I, I think I would like a little time to coordinate uh, schedules to make sure that I am here and members of the board are here, if that's okay. So maybe Ms. by council. next council meeting we could have you think we could come up I with think we could set a date at the next council meeting. That's what I mean. That's, fair. that's what I mean. Have a date and time set. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank no. you. Change my mind. Never mind. Okay. All right. Do you want to amend your, your motion to oh. have, have a date set in time by, by next council meeting if possible? Yes, I, I would like to amend my motion rather than specifying a date and time, uh, a date and time to be determined at the next council meeting. All right. So we've got a motion in a second for a joint meeting with the council and the board of water and liquor. Any further discussion? Mr. Armstrong? Uh, I know the, the mayor chose to dissolve the committee that we already had established. I think if something is not broke, there's no need to fix it. We just need to get those individuals back to the table. And I think that's a much more reasonable expectation than trying to get uh, 20 people to have a discussion about something rather than no clear understanding of what we're expected to talk about or what we're expected to accomplish. I think we can reconvene the committee that we had previously. We can have an agenda to have something to talk about. And I think that that can be set by the president of the board and by the mayor, and that it's their job to work to resolve this issue. And I don't think that this proposal is very well thought out. And I don't see what it will accomplish other than 
create mass chaos of us trying to have a discussion with, with too many cooks in the kitchen. And I think we have a mechanism to try to accomplish this goal, and that's what I would prefer. All right, thank you. Mr. Hardesty. Much as I hate agreeing with Councilman Armstrong, I would have to agree with that, because if we had that sort of a meeting with that many people, we should arrange drinks and dinner, because it's going to take a hell of a long time. So it seems impractical putting a smaller committee together and listening to what each side says, have it in an area that it can be recorded and referred to, makes a lot more sense. Thanks, Gossie. So first of all, uh, one of the things Mr. Armstrong said is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Can you honestly look around this room and tell me you think it's not broke? I'm, right? I'm working very hard to make sure that it stays broke. Okay, thank you very much for applauding her yet again, but I am working very hard with members of the committee and with Chuck Bryant to try and resolve these issues. I have been to all the meetings, I have done everything, I've made phone calls. I, I don't know who you're talking to, but there is work being done to make these issues resolved, and I don't feel like you're a part of it when you do these things. So you don't feel like I'm a part of a resolution when I suggest that the council sit down with the CWEP board and, and hash everything out and have a thorough discussion? I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I'm also a little confused by, by Mr. Hardesty's argument. His concern is that it would take a lot of time. Yeah, it might take a lot of time because we have a lot of issues. That is not a reason to not do this type of thing. And then also, I would agree with you, an agenda needs to be set. I think the president of the CWEP board and, and our mayor should get together and set an agenda. I, I wouldn't propose that we get together and just wander aimlessly and hurl aimless accusations. I think an agenda absolutely should be made. But if you're suggesting that we go back to the committee where we had three people from the council and three people from CWEP, well, I believe the mayor dissolved that committee. I'm not sure why, because the because it wasn't discussed with us. However, it apparently that didn't work well as a member of that committee who was there making those discussions I feel like we made progress and we are still I am still continuing to work on that agenda with members of the board to try to get those items on this agenda I have not quit and I am still working and I feel that that meeting was very productive and that we made progress now coming back to it I think that we have an opportunity here to look at it again and to maybe restart that, but but I just don't I just don't understand Ms. Cossey. It seems like everything you want to argue about, you just can't let go, and that you need to have the last word. How are you going to be involved in a meeting with 20 people where you don't get the last word? So I don't need to have the last word. And in, in okay. fact, most of the times here's I'm the last words. We've got a motion on the floor. Let's vote on the motion. There's a motion to move to have a, a joint meeting with Carthage Water Electric Board. To, with, at a time to be announced at the next council meeting. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, raise your hand. Six. Are you saying no, Are you saying? I am saying, tell me again what the motion was. They had a joint meeting. A joint meeting, joint meeting. To, at a time to be announced at the next council meeting. Okay. I am, I am very no on that. All right, so the yeses had your hands up. Did we, got that? Did we get that count? Okay, six. 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 Seven. Seven, all right, so motion carried. All right, oh, six. we'll get together, we'll figure out a time. All right, now let's move on to administrative reports. <laughs> Mr. Dowling. Uh, Where are we at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Administrative um, report. I'd like to. Well, first, I'd like to thank the over 60 center. I'm not sure if they're still here. Hopefully, yeah, she decided yeah, to leave. I don't think she is. That's a. I mean, I know you all know that that's a, a very good venture, and it keeps a lot of bad things from happening to all our elderly people. Um, as far as let's things went. To, uh, 
think we talked, there's been a lot of mention of, of notifying the Attorney General's office. I think I've always in, encouraged people to do that if they think they need to call the AG's office. Uh, you know, if you've got, I feel that if, if we've got nothing to hide, fine. If they think we violated something, it's better to hear it, what they think needs to be corrected. And I think that, uh, you know, in the years I've been here, I think we've had two uh, things resolved from them with the Sunshine Law. One was recent, the other one was a past gentleman trying to get reports at the, from the police department. But uh, certainly th their involvement is not something that we should shy away from if we've got, if we're doing what we're yep. supposed to be doing. Um, there, again, there was mentioned tonight, same as last meeting about the railroad bridges. Um, I think that should be addressed for some of you that weren't here probably before we started talking because I wasn't even here when those get started to get communications between the two. I think there's been ongoing communications, I want to say somewhere in like the mid 80s, um, early 90s that were sent between the council or the mayors and the railroad. Um, the real problem was the doctrine of continuing breach, which means that each day that they didn't fix the bridge, that's a new breach of contract. Uh, that doctrine didn't come around. At the time we had the bridges, that was one of the things the tribunal and the appellate court found. And really, their argument in their proceeding was that the statute of limitations had ran five years prior, but their comments were that maybe as much as 90 years prior, the statute had ran as soon as the city realized they weren't maintaining the bridges that we should have sued at that time. But in the same breath they did, the MoDOT, because of the decisions they made, has put the bridges on the railroad and say the railroad is obvious they're the ones that constructed them across the easement that they were given and so I think the work now is with the Public Service Commission and MoDOT's railroad division to work on getting those taken care of and making the railroad do that uh, but we've discussed that quite a few times I think since then the um, there's been some issues on the management agreement, whatever the resolution was. The, it should be explained to the council that the property we're talking about has not been purchased yet. But if it is purchased, there's a management agreement saying the CDEC is the one that manages it. And I think that's what we all thought they were going to do to start with. Um, but the council, um, whether they have a management agreement or not, is the ultimate decision makers as far as what happens because the city owns the property. If, if it's purchased, the city will own the property. Um, so I don't want you guys to think that that was taken away from you, but management agreement or not, any kind of thing that's going to happen has to come back to you all as far as um, the uh, property goes once it's purchased. Um, we have sold some property since I've been here on the, in the airport area, and I think every time, well, I know every time that that price point's been set by the council, if you remember, there's been different price points set throughout the time uh, dealing with whether it was a revenue generating property versus a non revenue generating property uh, and I don't remember what the last appraised value was but they were pretty close to I believe the appraised value um, there were not to beat a, a dead horse because I think we have probably willing to get out of here pretty quickly but I wanted to go over a little bit of the legal stuff from the last time that was, you guys received a handout at the last meeting as well as some other comments uh, regarding uh, Sunshine Law and the meeting where um, Mr. Short's resignation was accepted and Mr. Gagnon was hired. Those me meetings did, ex minutes did exist. They were from April of 22. Um, there was nothing inappropriate about them being done in closed session because hiring and firing can be done in closed session and that's what it was. It was an 8-0 vote I'm um, at that time to hire the city administrator and those minutes were published now, they weren't put on the internet at that time because we didn't put any of our minutes on the internet at that time so they were published I believe they were put on the board and emailed out I'm going to say hey Siri over and over again um, there were there was a uh, a point on there dealing anything that was dealing in that in that handout you got dealing with chapter 77 those don't apply to the city the city is a third it's not a third class city those apply to third class cities um, so that's uh, we are a home rule charter city and been that way since I think 94 um, and so that's not an issue that was discussed at the time the I don't know there was some issue with the 
alleged that the council changed the qualifications. That didn't happen. Um, I think they followed the qualifications outlined in our in our code. Uh, compensation by all city uh, employees is approved by ordinance with the budget. Um, whether it's cl as clearly laid out as you'd like, there's a there's a uh, chart at the back of the budget that shows the uh, salary study and. At the committee level, it's broke down even further by employee and then passed by the budget committee and then the budget itself passed by the city. Um, the, the allegation dealing with the assistant or assistant city administrator, the charter says officers of the city have to be approved by ordinance, the new position made, um, the creation of a new position. That position is not an officer of the city, it's an employee. Um, if you look at our definition of the code, officer is a department head, um, which doesn't require that an ordinance to approve it. However, it was added to the organizational chart and passed with the budget July 1 of 22. Before we ever appointed somebody to that position, it was in that organizational chart. That so the issue that came up with the temporary appointment, that was done by the council, although it didn't need to be done by the council, considering that it can be hired by the executive branch of the city because it's an employee. And again, likewise, in January, when the chiefs were appointed, um, I think that's when Brian got appointed and Bill got appointed to chief, and then that position was made, uh, the uh, appointment to that, or hire of that position was made permanent after that transition was done with Mr. Dagnan into the assistant city administrator job. There was an issue brought up about transfer of money. I think you all seen the budget. There's, there were things added as far as the, uh, uh, so there's nothing illegal about the budget that was passed. I don't know if that's what's being alleged that there was a financial, um, a financial current financial deficit the city began this fiscal year with six roughly six and a half million in the bank estimate income of 14 with the expenditures of 14.7 um, although I think there were some added capital expenses put in because of the carryover from last year so that's obviously not a getting to the revenue estimates would not be an issue and that's not legally an issue at that point There was an allegation made that the city was trying to get rid of third party groups in the city. Obviously that's not something the city council can do. And I think lastly, just to help Michael out, Michael didn't hire any of these people. <laughs> um, there was a statement that Mr. Miller had hired both Greg and um, Tracy to those positions. He's the HR director. He posted those positions, but or the positions each time, but that was not uh, his job to hire people and, and did not do so. Um, that's all I have tonight. All right. Thank you. Chief Hawkins. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Chief Huntley. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Carney. Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Ms. Alma I always have something. Uh, we have more activity in, than ever in the parks, so we're super excited about that. I did want to mention that, of course, anybody can use the parks at any time without any reservation, but if you would like to uh, make sure that you are assured that you have a spot for your group or organization, then we encourage you to call our office or visit the website to make that reservation. Just wanted to clear up any confusion on that front. Thank you, Your Honor. All righty. Thank you. Ms. Cox. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first of all, I was not at the last council meeting, so I did not give uh, the sales tax report. I have no doubt that Alan probably spoke about it, but I do want to, want to point out that our use tax is up 58% over the same year to date as last <coughs> year, but our sales tax revenues are down 4.8% uh, over the same time last year. So boy, we definitely need to be making a push to spend locally and um, not, necessar not necessarily Amazon Prime. So um, 
Also, my second comment would be that our city employees are having a canned food drive contest. So um, since the other department heads have already spoken, I'm going to take the opportunity <laughs> to say, if you would like to help City Hall out in our endeavors with the canned food drive, we sure would appreciate it. Bring any canned food that you would like to bring and donate, so and help City Hall get ahead of the other departments. Um, okay, my other comments, I always have stuck to uh, speaking about uh, things that, uh, financial reports with the city or something like that, but um, in the spirit of everything that has been said tonight, I have a few things that I do want to say. Uh, first of all, thank you, Alan, for your comments on the decorum. I do think tonight um, the conversations were very good compared to what they have been in the past and maybe a reminder of that will help. I think that it's also going to take um, an effort on everybody's part to calm the, um, the discussions that we have here at council. Um, and if, when we talk about having the joint meeting, I know that David has worked very hard um, with the trying to withhold you know, his end of the agreement with having the, the three uh, CWEP members and the three council members, but I do not feel that that has gone anywhere because three um, council members do not represent the majority. I know that there are a lot of issues to fix and I know that they cannot be fixed in one meeting, but that doesn't mean that we can't prioritize and work together to resolve the issues one at a time. And I think if we can show that to our citizens that we're willing to work together and take on one issue at a time and show that we are making progress and that we are working together, I think that would definitely ease concerns on not only CWEP side, but also the city side. So I, I do look forward to the joint meeting and hope that we can make some positive progress out of the joint meeting. And that's all I have tonight, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dagnan. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, uh, there are just a few things I'd like to highlight from my report. Uh, one of the things I do want to let the council know that city staff is auditing the boards and commissions. Uh, just a couple of quick experiences. I called one of our boards to, uh, to basically ask, hey, do we need to replace this board member? What's going on? And the board member had a new board member had been showing up and voting and we didn't know it. Uh, I've also called the board member to ask them if they still wanted to serve and they had moved away by then. So uh, if you've seen the board list, it is extensive. It's an Excel spreadsheet, it's a lot of pages, uh, but we are actually just going through and auditing it for compliance, even just basically make sure we have the right contact information. Because sometimes we don't have that. So that is one thing uh, that, we, that a couple council members have mentioned and we are working on that. Um, I, so I did, you'll notice that some of these council minutes ended up on your desk. So one of the neat things that I think happened tonight and a council member suggested this and she knows who she is, was having the QR code on the screen where you can come in, hit the TV with your phone or tablet and everyone's, everyone's looking, it's not there now, sorry. At the beginning of the meeting, you can hit it with your phone or tablet. It takes you right to the council packet, not just the agenda, but to the whole packet. Thought that was a great idea. The uh, trickiness with that is, if you change anything about the packet, it's a new code. So uh, when we were trying to get this correspondence uh, from Mr. Putnam that I had provided, wanted you all to know what I'd provided, um, we didn't want to change the QR code. So you have it on your desk, it will be in the next correspondence so we can keep a record of it. Uh, but that's how that happened. Um, I do agree with um, generally what Mr. Uh, Cruz has said. We, I did talk to the uh, Bank of America trustee for Steadley and I had heard rumors. People had told me directly, hey, if your name's on the grant, they're not gonna prove it. If the city of Carthage is on the grant, they're not gonna prove it. And I thought, what better chance than to make sure that's not true. Um, I did speak to Tony Twyman for quite a while. He was very reassuring that that would be a violation of the trust. There's no way that's happening. And even kind of giggled when I asked him. So clearly 
Um, you know, that is not something that the trust can do. If you want to see those further emails, I'm trying to be, I, I know you guys are probably getting tired of uh, the correspondence, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm trying to keep you in the loop as much as I can. So you have all the emails, uh, literally all the emails between Tony Twyman and me, you got. Um, he did, as Mr. Cruz has said, he did confirm that we are right on track with this property, that the, the grant is not in jeopardy. As long as we continue to do what we promised to do, we're fine. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, the management agreement, you have a copy of it in your packet. I just wanted you to see it. It will actually end up going to the budget committee for the next budget hearing, and then hopefully have two readings in October, and then the mayor can sign it, get it back to this group, and we can continue to, to work on this industrial property, which is very important. Um, I want to mention that, you know, every other Tuesday we have a staff meeting. And you got something flying around over there? No, it's not like cool air. Oh, cool air. Okay, it's it's my it's my uh, speech. I, I do want to mention that every other Tuesday we have a staff meeting. Uh, department heads come in, and we just essentially talk about city business and what is going on. And I'm not going to repeat what everybody's already said, uh, but a lot of the sentiments, what you know, what Ms. Cox said, Mr. Snow, uh, Mr. Hardesty, a lot of the a lot of the sentiments that were said is when we sit in that room and we talk about what is actually going right in the city, which is amazing. There are a lot of good things going right. And our department heads and all of their staff, um, you, you know, really should be appreciated and respected for the hard work that they do. And unfortunately, with this water electric thing, we forget to talk about those things a lot. Used to be every council meeting, we talk about something good that was happening, and, and now we're not. And I would just like to say, I'd like to get back to that. Um, on a couple of other notes, um, I was told that there are 41 people watching the stream right now, so watching the live council meeting right now, and I do want to apologize. I did send you guys, I did send you guys out an email saying that we would have to build a ramp to get the mayor on the stage. I was also unaware that the previous one still existed, uh, so I did not know. I thought we were going to have to rebuild it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, let me just make sure. Weren't you gone with your wife's surgery though then? So you wouldn't have yeah, uh, yes, possibly I, yeah, forgotten where it went. Yes, I was gone. I never okay. saw the ramp, but thank you. Yeah, so. Um, and then I think the mayor usually talks about talking to the second graders. Oh, uh, I did forget that. I, you know, it, it's been a long meeting. I, I kind of got <laughs> sidetracked there, but uh, five classes of second graders came in from Fairview School, and it was awesome. It was great it fun. Was, it was a blast. Yeah. I look forward to that every year. This whole room was full of nothing but fifth grade or second graders, and you gotta love it. Those kids. No filter. There's no question they won't ask. They'll ask you anything that pops into their head, and I love it. I love every minute of it. It's a blast. Um, and that is all I have, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Let's move on to report of the claims against the city. <coughs> Committee on Claims filed a report in the amount of $709,789.78. Ms. Blair. I make a motion to accept the report and allow the claims. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the report and allow the claims. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to old business. Second reading of Council Bill 23-63, an ordinance amending the annual operating and capital budget of the City of Carthage for fiscal years 2022 to 2023 and 2023 to 2024 for the general fund. Any discussion? Cast your vote.
Council bill passes. Second reading of Council Bill 23-64, an ordinance in the City of Carthage, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between the City of Carthage, Missouri and Total Electronics Contracting Incorporated for installing door access controls for security at City Hall. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Council Bill 23-65, second reading, an ordinance in the City of Carthage, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract between the City of Carthage, Missouri and g, &G Construction Co Company Incorporated for sidewalk improvements along River Street between Fairview and Airport Drive pursuant to TAP 1601704 in the amount of $318,269.23 in the City of Carthage, Missouri. <coughs> Any discussion? Mr. Armstrong. Uh, I believe it was maybe four years ago when Mr. Patrick came to this room and asked for this to be a project to be considered. I know that government often works slow when it works at all, but these programs are the best programs that we have access to, period. Uh, I want to thank the Public Works Department for their hard work on this. I want to thank Zavin. Uh, engineering for their hard work on this and I want to thank Mr. Patrick for bringing this to the council's attention and we got it done. All right. Any further discussion? Catch your vote. Second reading of Council Bill 23-66, an ordinance establishing a nuisance and abatement violation cost recovery fee in the City of Carthage, Missouri. Any discussion? Okay, vote. Second reading of Council Bill 23-67, an ordinance to amend Chapter 13 of the Code of the City of Carthage to add Article 9, Aesthetic Regulations in the City of Carthage, Missouri. Any discussion? Mr. Armstrong. Uh, yes, I just want to say the, these two ordinances that were discussed in Public Works are in no way meant to be punitive, that these are in response to complaints which have been received by the committee and myself for many years, and this is... Uh, one way in which we're intending to try to solve the problems in our town to keep our town beautiful and those who are facing hardships have always been um, and, and always will be uh, considered by the Public Works Department and our nuisance abatement for um, whatever hardships they may have in processing any of these fees that while we may not be able as a council to remove the actual cost spent to deal with some of these problems that administrative fees are always a secondary option and can be removed in the event that, that someone does actually have a hardship and that citizens, caring for our citizens and caring for our community is always the first priority. Um, the issue is that when we have people who do not live in our community and do not care about it but own property here um, and exploit our community and its resources, that we make sure that those people are, we're recovering the cost of maintaining their property for them. Anything further? I, do, I just have a couple of, of clarifying points or questions, actually. And I apologize. I know first reading is normally the point when these are asked. Um, so just in the language, the the first question I have is 
when the language in section 13302 says it is an affirmative defense that the defendant did not have the legal right to control the location where the violation of this article occurred so specifically um, did you envision that being uh, landlords being able to to waive that right in a lease or in a lease purchase type situation Um, I don't think we've interpreted that way before because I think the landlords always had authority to to uh, remedy that nuisance. Is thirteen? Is that under the aesthetic one or the other? Uh, it's under twenty three dash sixty seven. Aesthetic. Yeah. yeah. So they so the aesthetic that one is a little different in the sense that yes, it could be that the landlord doesn't have authority. So the other one's a 14-day process under reg regular abating a nuisance, and this procedure is supposed to be more of a design. If somebody's got a couch out in the front yard or they've got a water heater, that we can go cite the person who's responsible for it. So it could be personal property that isn't owned by the landlord. I don't think we would we try to cite the person and normally do the person who's responsible. Okay. So, so just just so I'm clarifying, is, is this supplemental to an additional ordinance that we have? It's. You can use an additional ordinance, but it would take, that's what the other, uh, the abatement of a nuisance takes, is it 14 days from posting? Um, this is a, just an easier, lower fine, but an easier one to say, hey, you've got 40 hours to remove this certain item out of the area. Um, so it's hopefully to get people to clean small stuff up easier than using a full-blown nuisance and abatement for maybe one or two items. Okay, and, and my main concern there was just that I, I've had a citizen complain to me previously that um, there's a house that has items that need to be cleaned up and that we don't seem to be able to cite them because there's a lease purchase and the, the actual owner of the property says, well, it's under lease purchase and the tenants say it's not our problem and then we're, we're at loggerheads because we can't find anybody to, to force to clean it up. And so I just wanna make sure we have something in our ordinances, whether it's this or another ordinance where we can, can force that. That would be under the abatement one because this one is not gonna be for us to clean it up. We're just telling them you're gonna get cited if you don't pick up that item. Okay, thank you very much. And then I just have one additional question and then I'm good. Um, so in the following section, 13-303 under continuing violations, it says each day is a violation of this article uh, that continue, oh, sorry, I'm reading that weird. Each day that a violation of this article continues shall be deemed a separate offense. So just for clarification, does that mean, so each offense could potentially create a penalty so is that fifty dollars a day is that the way that's anticipated to be read? so we've got really two remedies you can or this is the aesthetic one again mm -hmm. yeah okay yes after the 48 hours if they don't pay picked up we can keep citing okay but if you don't have that in there then it's one offense. okay and so the 48 hours um could you please just clarify for me on that and it may be that i missed it in my reading is that 48 hours after a letter has gone out don't we usually notify people by mail not on those they'll notify them in person then okay or if they have to they can notify them by mail but that would be hopefully go up knock on the door and say you need to move this okay and this is the one that's aimed at whoever is living in the yes. residence okay thank you so much i appreciate it all right anything further catch votes Council Bill 23-68, an ordinance authorizing a special use permit for operation of Carnival at Fair Acres Sports Complex in the city of Carthage, Jasper County, Missouri. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Council Bill.
still passes. Second reading of Council Bill 23-69, an ordinance to amend Section 2-317 and Section 2-121 of the Carthage Code to include the members of the CWEP Board under the removal procedure, the same as officers of the city, and to change the removal to be for cause for all officers of the city in the city of Carthage, Missouri. Any discussion? Mr. Hardesty. What I remember from uh, last meeting, Mr. Lastly stated that they didn't want to be thought of as officers. Can you speak in your microphone? I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, what I remember from last meeting is that Mr. Lastly had stated that they didn't feel that they wanted to be members of the thought of it as officers of the city. So they were actually against this. So with that in mind, I'm going to support their idea in that and vote against this. They didn't want it. So I'm giving them what they want. Ms. Blair. I I understood it differently or separately perhaps that this was to actually protect the board members and give them the same procedure. So I'm, I, I had the op a different opinion. Well, no, that's what it does. That's what okay. it's doing. But he had said they didn't want that when he stood on the side of the room. Anyway, that was my okay. interpretation. Right. Anything further? Uh, well, I, since there seems to be some confusion, we do have some CWEP board members here tonight. I wonder if maybe we could ask the people who are here how they feel about this, just to get clarification on whether we should vote yes or no. I think Brian's hiding around the corner. Right. Hey, Brian had to go. Don't see Derek. Yeah, I think they're both gone. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, I could not hear yeah, you. Yeah, couldn't feel free. Yeah, yeah he, I could he, not he, hear he, Darren. Yeah, I think Chuck. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to belabor, and I don't want to speak for Mr. Lasley. Uh, Nate and Cassandra uh, Ludwig, our uh, general counsel, did a great job of working through many ordinances in a very short amount of time to come up with a lot of mutually agreeable language. This was one uh, that the, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Mayor, that during the time in which the board was removed and then came back, this was a, a point that was wanted very mm -hmm. badly for the board, that there was an opportunity for due process. You can't just be removed because you don't like the colors right. of my shirt, right? right. And uh, so I believe the board uh, wants that. <clears throat> I don't. Uh, I don't want to speak for Mr. Lasley. I think uh, the the uh, how that was presented is perhaps where Mr. Lasley found uh, cause to make a comment. Uh, I never asked him uh, about that, and I'm not confident that the board members did either. So uh, I couldn't elaborate on that any further, other than uh, Mr. Uh, Collier, Mr. Goff, but. Uh, a due process opportunity for the board of directors is is was asked for and agreed mm -hmm. upon uh, in June, and I think they still feel that same way, Mr. Harvesty. All right. Anything further? Mm -hmm. Cast your votes. Could we see who the votes are, please? Working on it.
So we'll move on to mayor's appointment. Mr. Armstrong. Your Honor, I motion to approve the mayor's appointments. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the mayor's appointments. Any discussion? Yes, so first of all, I would like to say that I'm going to be voting no on the mayor's appointments, and I would like to make sure that everyone understands it has nothing to do with the lack of confidence of the people who are named in the appointments. It has everything to do with the concern that we are replacing two very qualified board members from the CWEP board. Uh, the mayor made a statement actually back in June in closed session that he intended to replace them, and I'm a little bit concerned that that, that hasn't been changed. I'm concerned about the reasoning behind that. It seems very punitive to me and it doesn't seem logical but i do want to say that the people who are nominated i am sure are fine people and i thank them for being willing to serve when asked but i'm voting no because i believe that it's not the right thing to do to replace the board those see what board members all right mr snow yes your honor i'd like to make a motion to divide the question I'd like to make a motion to take a quick break because we've yeah. all been sitting here for a long time. We've got a motion on the, <laughs> got a motion on the table. Second. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll do a recess and Thank we'll you. deal with the <laughs> run run. She sounded five, five minutes. Sorry, Alan. She sounded desperate. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> so,
Yeah. Big difference. Think it's going? Okay. All right. So at, when we broke. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. It's been a long meeting. <laughs> I believe we had a motion on the floor to separate the questions. Was there a second for that? I have a motion and a second to separate the question. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. All right. So read. Okay. Yep. The mayor's appointment of Sid Teal. Nope. Shelby Bob. I'm so sorry. Yep. The fine. mayor's appointment of Shelby Bob Brenner to the McCune Brooks Hospital Board. Mr. Ella. Your Honor, I move we adopt the resolution for Ms. Brenner of the Curious Hospital Board. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the appointment. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The Mayor's appointment of Sid Teal to the Carthage Water and Electric Board until July 2027. Mr. Armstrong. Your Honor, I motion to approve the appointment of Sid Teal. Second. second. Have a motion and a second to uh, approve the appointment. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 All right, let's raise hands so we can, so we can, can get it on the record. Can we go back to discussion? There was a very tiny window for discussion. Yeah, I'd like to have yeah. it. Okay. okay. For just so, for discussion. Is that okay? Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I feel conflicted on this one on regarding the CWEP board because when the board was disbanded earlier in this year, that felt like an inappropriate way to manage it. And I believe that the mayor does have the ability to appoint people when their <coughs> terms are up. And so procedurally, I feel like this is the more appropriate way to manage who is on the board. However, I agree with what Councilwoman Cossey said about this is in no way a reflection of how I feel about the competencies or abilities for the people who have been put forth as new board members. My concern is more about the timing of things, the state of our city, and what appointing new members would do at this point. And so that is why I am not going to be voting to approve these okay. people. So we had the, the negative votes. Please raise your hands. That way we can. All right. So there's four. We're done. We'll need the positives. Yep. Case anybody's abstaining. Yep. Yep. Those in favor? It's approved. Six to four. Yep. Okay. The mayor's appointment of Tom Garrison to the Carthage Water and Electric Board until September 2027. Mr. Armstrong. Your Honor, I have a motion to approve the appointment of Mr. Garrison. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve the appointment of Mr. Garrison. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Raise your aye. hand. Those opposed? Appointment is adopted, accepted. We'll move on to res resolutions. Resolution 2009, a resolution approving the declaration as surplus to the city's needs and authorizing the disposition of 12 X26P tasers via a do donation to smaller agencies. Mr. Ella. Your Honor, I move we adopt resolution 2009. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt resolution 2009. Any discussion? Cast your votes. Resolution 2010, a resolution providing for the formal acceptance of a donation by the City Council of the City of Carthage, Missouri, pursuant to city policy. Mr. Armstrong. Your Honor, I motion for the adoption of Resolution 2010. Second. I have a motion and a second to adopt Resolution 2010. Any discussion? 
cast your votes. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Resolution stands adopted. That concludes our business for the, uh, the evening. Before closing comments, I just want to say I appreciate everybody coming in. Everybody's comments this evening were welcome and, and I hope we continue to, to do so in the future. Uh, any closing comments, Ms. Heckmaster? I would just like to thank everyone for coming, and I'd also like to thank you, Mayor, for doing your best to shepherd us through this all. Thank you. Mr. Hardesty. I've talked enough, nothing, nothing else. Mr. Snow. So I, I did have a thought when you spoke about the second graders coming in to uh, visit City Hall. Uh, years ago, I don't know how many years it's been now, we used to have a city government day where the high school government <laughs> students came in and participated in our council meeting. I know something like that isn't easy to coordinate, but perhaps we could have someone contact the high school and start the process to get that uh, Reinstated for next spring. Yeah, I know it has. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting over here being quiet. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. I I, I missed those. So that, that that's just a, a suggestion if we could get that um, process started. Also, uh, it's fall. It's almost maple leaf. It's almost October. High school football and high school soccer. Everyone I think in this on the council knows I'm a very big high school soccer supporter and our Carthage Tigers are doing unbelievable this year. They've lost one game so far and they are playing really well. So go Tigers. That's all your honor. All right, thank you, Mr. Ellis. This is for Mr. Snow. We had uh, ran into Ms. Stinger just this week and talked to Mr. Dagnan and we are trying to work something out. Mr. Huntley, you can be on the committee to help. I do Otherwise, I have no yeah. yeah. I hear he has connections at the school. Ms. <laughs> Cox. Um, yeah, so one of the things that struck me during the meeting were Ms. Cox's comments, and I want to thank her for those. They were very thoughtful, um, very eloquent, and she echoes the sentiment that a lot of us have, and I want to express my thanks to her for that. Um, I also, as always, I want to express my thanks to everyone for coming out and everyone who is watching us be a live stream and participating. Um, I, As always, I think citizen participation is very key because it helps us see what issues you care about based on what you speak about and what you turn out for. Um, I know that in the past people have, I, I've heard people criticize um, people who attend now because they've, they've been called a one issue crowd. But you know, if this is the one issue you care about and you care enough to show up, please continue to show up because in, until it's resolved, we, we need citizen um, participation. Although I would encourage you to come to each and every council meeting even after we have resolution on the, the issues that you care about. So thank you for turning out tonight. All right, thank you. Ms. Inzer. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I do want to take a second to explain my no vote on the joint meeting with council and the CWEP board. Um, I do believe that when you get that many people together in one room, it can be a chaotic, and I was in favor of having a smaller um, committee formed to address those things, and that's the only driving factor. It's not that I don't want to work any, work with anybody, hear anything. I just was worried about the chaoticness of having everybody together, and that's the only driving force in that. Um, I do want to thank Michael. Um, I am so excited about being able to live stream because I know that that is um, something that people have been asking for. And so I'm, I'm very excited about the live streaming and I'm very excited about the QR code because I think that that will help things be a lot easier and help people to be able to find our council packets faster by just tapping to scan it on their phone. So thank you everybody for coming out. That's it. All right, thank you, Ms. Taylor. Uh, nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Snow, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the soccer team doing really awesome as well this year? The That's high school? What I said. Oh, soccer. I didn't hear you. I said football. No, no. I, okay. I what is what is the soccer right now? Is it eight and one? 
I believe so. Okay. And then Saturday from 12 noon or 12 noon to 11 p.m. is the Spanish mm -hmm. Heritage Day at Central Park. Heritage Just Day. so yeah. if anybody wants to go, it's fun. I've been. It's a great time. Yeah. Great time. Great time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Armstrong. Well, since we are live streaming, I want to take the opportunity to say hi to Jeff Meredith, who was oh. watching, uh, not here. And also, I love you, Mom, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right. Ms. Blair. I think all I have to say is that I make a motion to adjourn our meeting. Second. Oh, all in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.